have moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis like me, and you're talking to a rheumatologist about a biologic, this is Humira. This is Humira, helping to relieve my pain and protect my joints from further damage. This is Humira, helping me reach for more. Doctors have been prescribing Humira for more than 10 years. Humira works for many adults. It targets and helps to block a specific source of inflammation that contributes to RA symptoms. The new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-time automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Mets have taken the field here at City Field as we get ready for Giants baseball. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is now open daily. 90 degrees here in New York City. Winds are low at six miles per hour, humidity at 48%, and it is a bit hazy and a bit partly cloudy, but still a nice night. Here's Bruce Bochy's lineup. Lineup that'll be facing Jonathan Neese. It'll be Aoki and then Joe Panic, and he's red hot right now, folks. It'll be Pagan Posey and Justin Maxwell. Maxwell went from hitting eighth to hitting fifth. Crawford, Duffy, and Susack, and then Lincecum will hit ninth. On the hill tonight for the New York Mets will be Jonathan Neese, a 6'3", 218-pounder. He's 28 years old in his sixth year at the big league level. And this is what he has done in 11 starts. He's 3-6 and six for the 4-4-3 ERA. In his last five starts, he has just been getting torched. In ERA in the sevens, the Mets are 0-5 in those last five games. And we'll watch him very closely. He has not been able to command the strike zone. When he's right, you're going to see a high 80s fastball. He'll sink. He'll cut it a curveball slider and a changeup. He'll throw everything at you. Really a finesse guy. Lifetime against the Giants. He's 1-3, but with a good 2-9 ADRA. But he has never had great success in the win-loss column against San Francisco. Let's take a look at the defense that the Mets will employ tonight against the Giants. Starting in their outfield from left to right, it'll be Kadair, Ligaris, and Granderson, the best arm in left field. Flores and Campbell on the left side. Herrera and Duda on the right side. And Travis Darno will be in the squad with down the signs. So here we are as Nori Aoki steps in. What a road trip he's been having. 10 for 18 on the road trip. <laughs> and a first pitch strike. 
And we get underway. One minute late. I believe in starting things on time, Mikey. So do you. I know that about you. You like to show up on time. You like everybody else to show up on time. It's important. The 1 1 pitch to Aoki, a swing and a miss. 1 and 2. That's what he has done on the road this season. First in the major leagues. On base percentage, first in the major leagues. Second total of hits of 44. Panic and then Pagan. So two balls, two strikes. Four hits last night. And the 2 2. And he shoots from the left field, a base hit. This He's guy is hot. Just playing pepper with big league pitching. And it doesn't make a difference what kind of stuff they're running up there. You make a mistake out of the play at the belt, he is going to find a hole. Amazing back control from Nori Aoki. Stay hot. 11 for 19 now on the road trip. And here's Joe Panic. Panic said five hits in this series, two hits have left the park. And here he takes a strike. Chris Siegel is calling balls and strikes. And you're going to see some high strikes with Chris Siegel. You'll see some belt highs. You're not going to see any really outrageously low strikes with his zone. And it rolls a foul. And, and Siegel, he gets your attention early in the game. He, he usually opens up with a tight zone, then it loosens up. You will see some corners as the, the night wears on, but it's a pretty good zone. It's a good zone to pitch to. You know what it's going to be the whole game. What you get in the first, you usually get in the ninth. Danley, Drake, and West from first to third. It's 0 and 2. To Joe Panic. And there's a soft toss to first. Oh, he's got 12 steals. Giants have scored in the first inning in both games in this series. He scored in the first inning last night on the Panic two run home run. Here he rolls it foul. This time he pulls it. And it remains nothing in two. Giants are a game back of the Dodgers in the West. The Mets are a half a game. Back of the Nationals in the East. Giants with a terrific road record. The Mets with a terrific home record. Panic off the end of the bat, and it takes a weird hop. Campbell the throw, and they know they caught him safe. Derwin Danley was about to ring up Joe Panic, and then he changed his mind. And now everybody waiting to see if the call was indeed correct. But look at this weird hop. Just a little cue shot and Campbell overruns it makes a nice play coming back across his body then an off balance throw it's very close. And they're going to look at it. And from that angle right there looks like the Mets may have gotten him. I don't know. That's well, close. It's a gamble because you know you lose this, and now you lose the ability to to have anything looked at until the is it the sixth inning? The this replay review is presented by Xfinity. I would think that this is going to take a while to determine. They're going to have to look at this a long time. One thing they do have in the New York offices when they're reviewing these replays is the ability to stop it, go frame to frame, so they really get a, an accurate look. I mean, they just stopped it on the big screen here and froze it right at the time it looked like the ball was going into Duda's glove. And it indeed looks like he may be out. But I don't know if there's enough there to overturn it. This is the one they're showing here at the ballpark. Well, it's either going to be Aoki at second with one out or 
Giants have runners at first and second with nobody out. Uh, whatever happens, you really can't fault Kerwood Daly, the, the, the up hard first base. I mean, Absolutely. Play so close. He had the thumb up, ready to ring him up. I don't know if they'll re if they'll overturn that. Quite honestly. Well, we're going to find out. And they call them safe. Well, that's an infield hit. And and for the 15 game hitting streak now for Panic and for Collins, that's it. He loses it. So he can't question a call to the seventh inning. That's correct. So here's Pagan. Pagan hitting 281. He went 0 for 5 on Tuesday and 0 for 3 last night. So against his former team, Angel Pagan in the series is 0 for 8. They had a 5 for 30 road trip, hit 167. And it looked like a breaking ball on the first pitch for a call strike. I don't think Nice is a guy you can go up there and look to pull. You really have to think if you're a right handed hitter, right center field gap, because he's got so many different speeds that he could give you. And now timeout was called. That looked like Nice is too enthusiastic about that late call. But I mean you run that risk if you're a pitcher and you come set and hold it for a long time. So it's 0 and 1 to Pagan, and Pagan takes low. One ball and one strike. Buster Posey to follow and ju then Justin Maxwell. Two and one. Just a bit inside with the curveball. So he's dragging Pagan through the garden. He opened him up with a little backdoor slider. Then he cut a fastball inside that dropped a big slow curveball on him. Three pitches, three different pitches. Three and one. Well, he's a pitch away from facing Posey with the bases loaded. Well, I'm sure he knows where the hot spots are in the, in the lineup right now. He's, he's watched the previous two games from the dugout. He has scouted this team the last three days, getting ready for the start. He knows who's hot and who isn't. This should be a pretty good pitch to hit. And he walked him. I figured that would be an automatic strike. That's a low strike we've seen called by other umpires in this crew, but you're not going to get those with Siegel. But you will get more belt high strikes with Siegel. Buster Posey hitting 295. And he's got ownage on Jonathan Neese. And he shoots one in the right field, a base hit. They're going to hold panic up. At third, coming in to score is Aoki, and it's one nothing Giants. Onage is Onage. Well, we talked about that approach, thinking the opposite gap against Nice, and that's exactly what Posey was thinking. Keep that front shoulder in, think the opposite side of the field. And he was looking for something hard first pitch, and there is an inside-out approach thinking right field, the way you're taught. And here's his reward. Hit right on the screws, and you can see everybody just doing the rumba around the, the bases, moving 90 feet at a time. Maxwell takes a strike. Maxwell hitting 240. Hit a home run last night. He's only faced Nice a couple of times. He's one for two. Panic, Pagan, and Posey are your base runners, and that's out of play. 
It was a home run last night off of Harvey. You got a change up. Change up up, and he just said, Thank you. Oh, it was absolutely blasted. Well, right now he finds himself way behind in the count. A one and two. You're looking at his best velocity right there. That's we reach back 91. Maxwell pops this one out of play. Duda will take a look at it. Nineteen pitches into the first inning, and Nice has not recorded an out. One and two. Two balls, two strikes on the fastball in. See the last five starts an ERA of almost eight, seven, nine, six. Oh, and four. The team is 0 and five in those games. Double play ball. That's one. That's two. Is. Maxwell stumbled over the bag and then ran into Kerwin Danley. A run comes in. It's 2 0. And the Giants will have Pagan at third with two outs. A little stumble there. Look out, Kerwin. Looked like he stepped on the back heel of Lucas Duda. Cost him to lose his footing. <laughs> Heads up. He just went over and pat him on the boiler. That's all. Here's Crawford who takes a strike. Crawford at 288 with eight home runs, 38 driven in. With Pagan at third and two outs. Flinched by Chris Siegel. It's one ball and one strike. Outside, two and one. Matt Duffy is in the on deck circle. Crawford slow roller. It'll be Herrera to Duda and that'll end the inning. Giants on the board twice. We will head to the bottom of the first inning. Giants two. Mets coming up. On his quest. been one true hero in my life. USAA salutes all our military service members and their families. Thank you. To come, Flores Darnell and Herrera Campbell with an eighth and Nice ninth.
on the hill tonight for the Giants, the two time National League Cy Young Award winning four time All Star, Tim Litzka. Let's go 5'11", 170 pounds, 30 years old, an eight-year veteran. And this is what he's done, 11 starts, 6-3 and three with a 3-2-9 ERA. For Lipscomb, you're going to see a uh, tonight for the Giants, the two-time National League Cy Young Award winning four-time All-Star, Tim Lipscomb. Let's go 5'11", 170 pounds, 30 years old, an eight-year veteran. And this is what he's done, 11 starts, 6-3 and three with a 3-2-9 ERA. For Lipscomb, you're going to see a, a high 80, occasional 90-ish fastball. That he will two and four seem. He's got a curveball, slider, and a forkball. Against these Mets, he's had fastball, especially at the knee high location. That is not a good start with the fastball. And he comes back and pours one in for a strike. That's an important pitch. Have to find confidence in the first inning. And for Litzkin, that's always been his Achilles heel. His ERA in the first inning is 4.7. After the first inning, it's 2.7. Twenty. And a miss. Two and two. Good for it. Anderson fouls it out of play. Nobody at third for the Giants. As Duffy is at the shortstop position. There you see the overshift. It's so rare to see an overshift like that against a leadoff hitter. Yeah, that's true. And uh, yes, he went around. His Granderson is retired. Let's take a look at that defense playing behind Tim Linscom tonight for the Giants, starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be uh, Oki, Pagan, and Maxwell. Maxwell with the best arm. Crawford and Duffy will control the left side of the infield. Panic and Posey. They'll be on the right side. Andrew Susak will be in the score. I put down the signs. Lagaris hitting 272. And he swings at a high fastball and fouls it back. Take a look at the high fastball and take a look at the check swing attempt from Curtis Granderson. Oh no, he went. He gets that ball. It's out of here. He didn't. Even give Joe West a look after the call was made. Lagaris had two hits yesterday in the series. He's two for six. Two balls and a strike on the high fastball. It's a warm one tonight. First pitch was 90 degrees. Sticky. Early in Tim Linscombe's career, he did not like humidity. No. He's learned to deal with it throughout his career. And a late call strike, so it's three and two. And there's an example of that high strike zone from Siegel, played umpire. Out of play on the fastball team. So that last pitch at 90 from Lincecum. Got him. So Susak calls for a 3 2 fastball. Lincecum shakes it off to get to the slider. And on a 3 2 pitch. A swing through C and it looked to me like Lagaris had not picked that thing up early. I was going to say sometimes it's not the location, it's just the the lack of velocity. I mean, this is a hanger. And that's right by him. Did not see that pitch. Here's Duda. Duda takes high. He's got nine home runs, 26 driven, and he's 0 for 6. In his career against Tim Lincecum. Due to one for five in the series. And an off speed pitch and a call strike. Yeah. 
And this is skied into left field for Nori Aoki. And a one two three inning for Tim Lincecum. For the Giants it'll be Matt Duffy to lead things off two nothing. Steven Spielberg returns to executive produce the long awaited next installment of Jurassic Park series Jurassic World opening in theaters on Friday. So here's Matt Duffy. Duffy Susak Linsicum facing Jonathan Neese and Duffy takes a call strike. Now we had a conversation today about what the Giants saw the first two games of this series. They saw lightning fastballs with Noah Syndergaard that Matt Harvey last night. And now you're facing a guy who's a finesse guy who is going to average about 88 miles per hour with this fastball. How, how do you adjust to that as a hitter? Well, I think you, you have to realize that you can wait a little longer and by doing so, just concentrate on going up the middle or go to right field. Duffy does that a lot anyway. I think with Duffy is if he pulls the ball, it's almost a mistake. Two and two. That's the pitch right there that he could get a lot of tonight with Chris Siegel, the plate umpire, and that little wraparound cutter at the belt. That's a tough assignment to do something with it. Right back to it. You sort of feel around the strike zone as to what you're going to get on the corners. I mean, that, that could become a very big pitch to to Nice. And Duffy takes the walk. Well, Sunday, this Sunday is the second annual Gamer Day at the ballpark, presented by Half Moon Bay Brewing Company. My partner will be joined by some special Giants guests for a pregame Q and A. Now, part of that package includes a Gamer Driver cap. Visit sfgiants.com slash special events. Here's Susak. Susak hitting at 212, a home run, three driven in. Duffy goes, swinging a foul out of play. Good swing there for Susak. Susak has good power. Huh? Talking foul line to foul line. He could knock the ball out of this ballpark. 
guys of power, they want to get their legs underneath them. And that was a 1 0 count. And that's the kind of swing and balance you want to see a, a guy like that have. Good at bat start with good swings. And a strike to Susak, one and two. On deck is Lincecum. We're in the second inning. Got him. First strikeout for Jonathan Neese. That's one of the lowest strikes we've seen. That it is a strike, no doubt. But for Chris Siegel, this is very low for him. Right down and in an inside corner, and I do believe it was in the zone. So here's Lincecum. And some nice punch. Duffy will go down to second. And he does it on the first pitch. Doesn't sound like a big thing, but when you're putting together momentum offensively, it really is. You can really help yourself out as a pitcher to do exactly what Linscombe did. So here's Nori Aoki who opened up the game with a base hit. That average now to 336. And he takes low and away for a ball. One ball and no strikes. As shallow as Kadir's playing and left. If Oki were to knock one into left field, it might be tough for Duffy to score. And there are two outs. He is going to get a good jump, but Kadir has a very accurate arm. He's staying away. He's found out that if you pitch Oki in, he's going to hit it to left. Now he steps off. It's two balls and no strikes with two outs. Right. I don't know if Oki thought so. Two and one. Take a look at how Jonathan Deese uses his pitches. Fastball about half the time. Do a lot of cutters, so that gives you about 70% hard stuff. And then he augments the fastball and the cutter with the curveball and the changeup. And the one pitch that he doesn't throw a whole lot of is his slider. Out of play. Look out. When you get a cutter. You saw he throws a lot. You kind of have a tendency to forget about the slider. Up the middle, off of Nice. Barrera's going to charge it, but not throw. It's another hit for Aoki. And Duffy moves to third. Now we said this the one road trip where Giants went to Colorado, then Milwaukee, and Aoki just kept getting hit after hit. We said he's not going to want to get off the road. Well, you can say the same thing here. Just another hit. That's 13 for 20 on this trip. It is a, a warm night, and I think that's why Danny Worth and the pitching coach for the Mets is coming out. Just to give Nice a bit of a breather. That's 41 pitches, and a lot of his night has been out of the stretch. And a lot of stress throws. And now he's coming into some hot hitters. And it's going to be Panic, who picked up an infield hit in the first inning.
Duffy's at third. Aoki's at first. And a strike. And it's 0 and 1. So the leadoff walk to Duffy has forced Nice to throw a lot of pitches. He pitched number 43. Then it'll be a throw to first. Shot into center field, but it's right at Lagares, and this is going to end the inning. No runs, a hit and a walk, two left. It remains two nothing Giants. His way last night Norioki throws out Curtis Granderson at the plate in the bottom of the first inning. Is he going to get him? Is he going to get him? He got him. And that's our Togo's big play. Right the boiler. So here's Kadire. It'll be Kadire Flores and Darno. And this is struck on the ground to panic. From his belly, he stands up and he throws him out. Yeah, it really the, helps if that last hop is going to come up. If it stays down, it's a much tougher play. Yeah, right. I mean, as he's fallen to it, I mean, he didn't have to stray too far away from his waist. We'll make that our forward right choice. Why not? Yeah, the concentration into the glove, and one of the red flags in that Mets lineup. Just hit a bullet right at somebody. Now, Kadire, lots of owners, John Lincecum. So here's Flores, who's never faced Lincecum before. Good pitch. Well, it looked like a good pitch. It's one ball and one strike. But that is one of the equations of a good night. The guys that hit you hard hit the ball at somebody. Just to our right. We're a Giants fan with a Buster Posey jersey on. With a beer in one hand. Muffed it. But did he spill any beer? He did not. Job well done. 
in the dirt. Three and two. And the payoff. Here it is. He walked it. And here's Darno. We always talk about it in ballparks that are very lively, like Coors Field or Philadelphia, how important it is not to walk anybody. Well, same thing could hold too true for a night where you're going to have a lot of heat or humidity. You have to be efficient with your throws. Darno activated before the game yesterday, and he went one for four. Takes high, so Lindsay come out of the stretch for the first time. A lot of injuries for the Mets. Big people injuries. And they lost their two best hitters, David Wright, Daniel Murphy. Well, Murphy, they got an idea when he might come back. They don't with David Wright. And they don't even know if he's going to come back. That's, the problem. Yep. That's pretty scary. And a strike. One ball and one strike. Dilson Herrera is on deck. Foul back. One and two. Darno takes a pretty good cut. He's got some power. Now I would make it a habit of throwing two newer pitches like the last one he saw. That was kind of a mistake, the location, right out of the play at the belt. Hooks it foul down the left field line. Nice catch. Cut his hat. All you have to do is bring your glove. Two and two. Good pitch, one, two, good take. Get on the ground, Duffy on the backhand. Can they turn it? Panic digs it out. The throw, not in time. Nice play by Panic digging it out. Oh, and a great play from from Duffy. Oh, really? Just laser two hopper to the backhand. Took a while to be able to get his balance off his back leg, and you see the nice turn there from Joe Panic. But Travis Darno for a catcher, he, he's got good wheels. He gets down that line well. So here's Herrera. In the dirt. The feet of Herrera. It almost looked like he kicked it on purpose. I don't think that was the case. And a strike. Get into center field for Pagan. And that's going to end the inning. Pagan's going to lead things off. 
as we head to the third it's two nothing Giants. Amici's East Coast Pizzeria. When you want the best pizza in town, Amici's delivers. Two nothing Giants. We are in the top of the third inning. As you look at the Big Apple, Empire State Building, the tall building, and here's Pagan who takes a strike. Pagan drew a walk in that first inning. One ball and one strike, Buster Posey, and then Justin Maxwell. Well, one and two. Perfect place for that changeup. The guy was not looking soft there. I feel like he was looking hard stuff, middle in. So he lets out a high fastball two and two. See many guys when they take their stride step in the batter's box open up. They usually close up when they take that, that step. Got him. All right, time now for our AT&T U-verse rewind. Angel Pagan, originally acquired by the Mets in a trade with the Cubs in January of 2008. He played here in New York four seasons from 2008 to 2011. And the Giants traded for Pagan in December 2011 for Ramon Ramirez and Andres Torres. So here's Buster Posey who rips one foul down the right field line and out of play. The Angels numbers with the Mets and the Giants. Bouncing ball up the middle. Herrera is going to make the play. Yeah, it's what you see is what you get. I mean, with the Mets, he was a 284 hitter on base, 337, and basically the same thing with the Giants. And he scores a lot of runs. And Pagan is really adamant about you know, where his journey in baseball has taken him. He thought he was very fortunate to play in Chicago, here in New York, and then, of course, San Francisco. He's been a fan favorite everywhere he's gone. Here's Maxwell. 
and Maxwell fouls it back. Now those numbers actually unbelievably close. Just a little low to Maxwell hit into a double play in the first it happened with the bases loaded and nobody out. It did not get a run but no RBI credited to Maxwell. This was cued foul one and two. Maxwell goes the other way and it's going to slice foul. Hey, guy brought his glove. We haven't seen many gloves here. All right. A man brought his glove too and he gets a ball. A bit. Maxwell goes around and that'll end the inning. Nice has settled down. Let's come coming out. He'll face Eric Campbell, two nothing Giants. is brought to you by Big O Tires. Tires, service, straight talk. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Well, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. You can watch every out-of-market game live or on demand at True HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Go to MLB.TV for details. So let's come here opening up is at bat with Campbell missing on a first pitch breaking ball. Here you see the numbers for Campbell. Hit 196 with a couple of home runs. Still trying to find the comfort zone. Yeah, he's one for seven in the series. Here he takes a strike. Nice on deck. Down the right field line. Foul. Two and two. Fourth ball just a bit low.
Got him. Right back with another fork. And let's get this third strike out of the day. All three have been swinging this strike threes. All right. I feel much safer. Do you? Yeah, I do. You never know what trouble can happen in Gotham. I feel much safer now. I guess there's not much going on in New York City tonight. Superheroes could take a night off and go to the ball game. I mean, do you think that they thought this whole thing out, or do you think they got lost? <laughs> I think they live here at the ballpark. Or maybe there was a convention somewhere, and they found out that it was next week. Ah, let's just go to the game. Wonder Woman's got her invisible airplane. Let's just go to the game. He's on the year is four for twenty, so he can hit a little bit. It's two balls in a strike. Tapped to Lincecum to Buster. It looked like it slipped out of Lincecum's hand and he's drying it off. Buster's going, you're going to throw me a scud and I'm playing it first? It's <laughs> killing me. Well, he, it's almost like he's playing hot potato out there on the mound when he gets a comebacker. He cannot get that ball out of his hands fast enough. Yeah, we talked about it before. Ferguson Jenkins used to do it, except he'd, he'd do a hook shot. For he would throw hook shots. It was hysterical. Here's Granderson who takes low, one ball and no strikes. The Hall of Famer. Great athlete. Boy, he ain't gonna miss. Good fork ball. Ferguson Jenkins used to play with the Globetrotters. Yes, yes, he did. Hall of Fame pitcher. Also a great basketball player. Check swing. It's now one and two to Granderson, and now Duffy can relax as he moves to the shortstop position. You could lay down a bun at all to the left side. It's 30 more hits. They're just giving you. Anderson thought about it too, too. But he's got power. He has the ability to hit one out of the ballpark, and they want him to swing the bat. Yeah, really, it wasn't a suggestion as much as it was. There's a lot of hits laying there. Got him. So now in the inning, four strikeouts for Lincecum. Crawford Duffy Susak coming up, 2 nothing. Giants.
is brought to you by Momo's, a San Francisco tradition. Log in to CSNBarrier.com's insider Alex Pavlovich. He provides wire-to-wire reporting of the Giants this year with breaking news, video special features, and more. Only on CSNBarrier.com. Here's Crawford. It'll be Crawford, Duffy, and Susak. Beautiful New York City. The bouncing ball up the middle. Herrera to his right. And for the second at bat in a row, Crawford's going to ground out 4 3. Four full days for us here in New York City. And uh, it really gives you a chance to walk around this beautiful city and see the sights and listen to the sounds. It's unique. There isn't another town like it. No. Not even close. It's its own personality completely. Here's Duffy who drew a walk in the second. And much the same way you de would describe San Francisco. Yeah. There's no place like San Francisco. Really? Chicago. Boston. We're going to go to a good one next week in Seattle. Good city. There really are no bad cities. In Major League Baseball. No, there are. We're just not going to point them out. <laughs> For fear of. Bad room service food. One ball and two strikes to Duffy. I can just think of one. Yeah, but don't we're say not it. No, we're not. Don't say it. Two and two. Susak on deck. Even the bad one we're thinking of is still better than any triple A or double A town. That's oh, yeah. the whole point. <laughs> At least that's the mindset you have as a player. Three and two, not a duffy. Although the ballparks they have in Triple A and Double A now are, are just unbelievable. Fabulous. I say that, I mean, you've seen it. You live now in Reno. The ballpark in Reno is unbelievable. Oh, oh, Sacramento, just stunning. Duffy on the ground. It'll be Duda. It's a big hop. He's going to have to hurry, and he just beats Duffy throughout. Well, Friday, June 12th is the second Orange Friday Happy Hour at AT&T, presented by Lagunitas Brewing Company. And you can join us at the pregame happy hour featuring live music and entertainment from Tainted Love. This special event ticket includes access to the party, a complimentary Lagunitas beer or soft drink, and a ticket to the Giants D-back game. So go to snfgiants.com slash special events. What was that group again? Tainted Love. Here's Susan. Dusak got caught looking in the second. I doubt that that's going to happen again. Fouls this one off the shin guard of Darno. It's a ball and a strike. Joe, you look back to some of those ballparks you played in the Texas League when we played, like Shreveport, which was a rickety old man box. Still a great yard. It was a yard. Did we know any better? No. The only time it gets weird is if you get to the big leagues for like a year and then you go back to double A. Yeah, that's when it's strange. It gets a little weird then. Which most of us had to do. Two and two to Susak. Played Key West, Florida one year. Not a pretty ballpark. Infield was St. Augustine grass, which unusual. But they would stop the game every night twice, and everybody in the stands would come out in the infield and they would spray for mosquitoes. Just like a rain delay. Mosquito spray delay. They are pitch to Susak. Got him. And that'll end the inning. Four strikeouts for D. Two nothing Giants.
2013. Buster Posey, well, he headed to New York City to pick up his National League MVP award. And also at that time, he met with Yogi Berra. And he took a tour of the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center. Buster Posey, pleasure to meet you. What's the. Uh... Are these the actual rings here? Now I get one of yours, right? <laughs> That's quite a moment for Buster Posey. And here's Juan Lagares to lead things off. You look at Yogi Berra and you see at his age how he's a little man now, but he wasn't very big as a player either. And I think he racked up three MVPs. It is amazing when you get next to him as to how little he is. Yeah. And a dead pole hitter took full advantage of the short porch at Yankee Stadium. There's some amazing statistics about it. Oh, and two. But the one that is amazing is, is double headers used to be on the on the schedule. Play you know, half a dozen, maybe even more a year. And the very first time he played a double header as a rookie, Yogi Bear caught the first game, took the same game off. When the game was over, back in the clubhouse after the double dip was done, Joe DiMaggio walked up to Yogi Bear and Yogi Bear idolized him. And said, well, You took a day off? And he didn't take another double header off for like the next 100 that he could. He caught both ends of it. No swing. It's yeah. some ridiculous statistic that just shows how durable and tough Yogi Bear was. And the other thing about him, too, is he was a switch hitter. And he really was a pull hitter from both sides. You watch some of the old clips. You talk about a great target to throw to. Wow. Up high, so it's two and two now to Lagares. Plus, you think he was fun to play with, and some of the things that came out of his mouth. And yeah, things are a little quiet. Let's go over to Yogi's locker. Two-two pitch to Lagares is hit out of play again. On a on a break on that. All right, let's take a look at how they compare. Yogi Berra, nine titles, world championships, nine world championships, three times an MVP. Elston Howard, three titles, one time an MVP. Mickey Cochran, three titles, two times an MVP. Buster Posey, three titles, one time an MVP. So that one bounces, and it's now three and two. In a lot of ways, I, I'm sure that Buster Posey takes first base very serious, but he might get bored. Hit foul down the right field line. Maxwell is going to watch this one drift into the seat. Well, it's definitely a different position in regards to activity playing first base as opposed to catching. But, I mean, First base, there's something going on there. Absolutely. You get a whole lot more action at first base than you do at one of the corner outfield positions. Got him. And he gets him for the second time. Now that's five strikeouts from Linscom, all swinging this strike threes and watch the, the fork ball. I mean, that's one Mike where if he doesn't swing, it might be a strike. You see the tumbling action, it just dies as it gets up to the strike zone. And I agree with you, I think it was a strike. Good pitch. Here's Lucas Duda who takes a pitch inside for a ball. Duda hit a fly ball to left field to end the first inning. Giants scored two in the first, and that's it. It's two nothing. Overshift is on for Duda. Two and zero. Oh.
three and So with a guy that's got a little ownage on you on deck, Lincecum probably wants to come into the strike zone here to Lucas Duda. And he does. It's three and one. Gonna step off, go to the rosin. It's a warm night. Take a little breath, deep breath. Last night we watched Tim Hudson take that rosin, make it put it on the top of his head. Yeah, he did. That was a first for me. And the walk. Second base runner. Both walks. Here's Kadire. Kadire hit a ball to the left of Panic, who made a nice diving play to throw him out. So Kadire waiting and a pitch in the dirt. So it's one ball and no strikes. It's a come looking for the double play ball. Crawford in panic yet double play depth. And a strike. Each pitch, one ball and one strike. Yeah, that's perfect location. Just took away count leverage with fastball down on the outside corner. Nobody's going to look for a fastball out there. Not the 1 0 count. A dire. Right over Tim Tuffle, the Mets third base coach. It's 1 and 2. Take a look. You want to be a big league third base coach? I mean, that was right over his head. Heads up, Timmy. I think old infielders should be able to take a glove up, coach there. Well, I'm just glad they're making him wear helmets now. Absolutely. On the ground, Duffy rolls up his arm. Copper's going to pick it up. Not in time. Ball was hit hard. End up being an error on Duffy, but it was hit hard. Just some flame comes up on him, hits him low in the, in the glove. Is not a whole lot he can do. The Crawford right there in the bare hand, and just a bit late at first base to get the one out. So it's an error on Duffy. And at this point, the Mets don't have a hit, so you got to play it that way. Plus, I do think it was an error. I think Matt Duffy will tell you it's an error. So here's Flores, who drew a walk in the second. Pops it up. Buster Posey. Buster puts it away. So here's Darno, who hit a ball sharply, and a nice backhanded play by Duffy to retire the lead runner. Darno did reach on a fielder's choice. Strikes. Fourth inning. Right now, Darno is going to look one speed, one location. It wasn't that location. It's one ball and one strike. It's not looking middle end. Those are things you remember. They set the target away. I mean, it came across the plate in. It wound up being a pretty good pitch. 
Litzkum's movement on the two seat fastball can come across the plate from the right side to the left side. I should say from the first base side to the third base side. Not an easy guy to catch at all. And because of that, he's not an easy guy to hit either. Two and two. I feel like he's been sitting soft the whole at bat. Like that was 86 miles an hour. What was it? Fastball. So he took a little off. Two balls, two strikes. Little looper to right, and it's going to fall. That's a fair ball. They're going to hold up the Dyer. So coming in to score is Duda, and it's two to one. And the Mets get their first hit tonight. Just a little Texas League flair, and a lot, not a whole lot that Posey could do. Posey had a good jump at it. I mean, it would have been a great play, but just not enough height on the ball to get a chance to get there to put a glove on it. So a nice two strike, two out RBI from Darno. And at this point, you just want to make sure everything goes clean so the back runner doesn't score. So here's. Dilson Herrera, who hit a fly ball to Pagan in the second. And a breaking ball high, one ball and no strength. Fourth inning, a two to one lead for the Giants. As sharp out of the stretch as he has been out of the windup. This is a struggle for him right now to get that strike zone. The long innings on hot nights. These are not good mixes. Two and two. Seventy-five pitches for Tim Lincecum. Now full count. And this becomes a huge pitch. See the perspiration just rolling off his back. Eric Campbell, third baseman, chalking up. On the move will be Travis Darno at first. And the walk. Either Dave or Getty's coming out to the mound or he's going to the phone. I do know he's moving around. That's 31 pitches on the inning. We talk about how hot it is out there. And he's 77 pitches into it. That's a lot of throws. At the end of four innings, you want to be at 60. So you get an idea of just how over the norm he is. 17 pitches too many right now, and he's not out of this inning. Campbell struck out in the third. And on the first pitch, Aoki's going to track it down, and that'll end the inning. Mets are on the board. It's two to one, Giants.
you by Stanford Children's Health. With 45 Bay Area locations, extraordinary care is now close to home. Well, with Father's Day coming up soon, we have the perfect gift for Giants fans. It's the Father's Day, Father's Day gift pack starting as low as 49 bucks. Gift pack, pack includes tickets to two Giants games and world champion cufflinks. Go to sfgiants.com slash minipack. And Lincecum shows bunt and he takes a strike. Nice had all kinds of problems in the first inning. Got a little trouble in the second, but after that, he's been terrific. He's had back to back one, two, three innings. Lincecum bounces this one to Flores. Flores will make Lincecum run. One out. And that'll bring up Nori Aoki, who will take his time, giving Lincecum a chance to get settled in on the bench. Well, I think he appreciate a little bench time right now. I don't think he's that upset hitting into an out on one pitch. Think about right now, you're looking for the ammonia water bucket with ice. Oh, does that feel good? Oh, he's two for two. He's got his average up to 339. 339. And a strike in its own one. One ball and one strike. Joe Panic on deck. We're in the fifth. Getaway night for the Giants. They'll be home tomorrow night, hosting the Arizona Diamondbacks, who are in San Francisco as we speak. There's a check swing roller to Panic. I've seen a lot of check swings in this hot streak for Oak. That check swing there is turning around to Chris Siegel, the plate umpire, to see if that pitch was going to be a strike. Slowly hit. Two down. I think Steve Berthume and Bob Brindley are having dinner right now in the city while we're here. Not that we don't want to be here. Don't yeah, get me wrong. I love New York. But yeah, I, I do think they're enjoying they their, their night off in San Francisco. Panic takes down low. Going to get to bed at a nice hour. Good night's sleep. Maybe Greg Schulte, Tom Candiotti doing the same thing. Yeah. 1 0 pitch here it is to panic. Panic rolls it foul, one ball and one strike. You just have to remind yourself that sleep is overrated. You don't need it. Who's Bochy not real happy with the schedule makers today? Slowly hit. Herrera will shovel it to Duda. And three ground balls here in the fifth. Lithicum coming out.
brought to you by the solar company. Not just any solar company. The solar company. Switch to solar and save. A two to one ball game here at City Field as you look into Manhattan. And it'll be Jonathan Neese to lead things off. And the first pitch is high and wide. Neese hit a ball back to Lincecum in the third inning. With the temperature the way it is, I don't think there's any doubt that the bullpen is on high alert. And now Lincecum needs to throw a strike here to to Jonathan Neese. His, his jersey is just 100% soaked through. Not close. It's three and zero. Oh. He's really. Showing a lot of emotion tonight after he's let go a lot of pitches, especially the breaking ball. Just not happy with the way the ball is feeling coming out of his hand. So he takes a lot off and he gets it in for a strike, and there's nothing wrong with doing that again. Very, very underrated mascot. He needs to blink once in a while, though. He's always got the I've had too much coffee look. Out of play, three and two. There's the man of steel. He's got a boiler. These guys don't. No. Hit well into center field. Pagan is going to watch it sail over his head. Nice is going to stop at second. And that's his fourth hit or fifth hit of the year. Something David Getty was talking about before the game about Nice asking about his what he throws. And he says, well, he's he's this, he's that, and he can also hit. And here you got a challenge. You don't want to walk him. And uh, Nice completely beats the defense over the head of Pagan. So now here's. Granderson. Granderson has struck out twice. And with the overshift on, Lincecum's going to spin around and take a look at Nice. Well, doubtful he's going to steal. If you're going to do something at all, you're going to put on a pickup play. Outside, it's one ball and no strikes. He's really helped himself out at the top of the fifth too. A quick one, two, three, shut down inning. Get, gets his offense right back in the dugout. So it's two and zero. Oh. Laboring right now. Yep. A lot of behind of the count. Guys to get some activity going in their bullpen. See a red alert here. About one pitch. And uh, a late call by Chris Siegel. It's two balls and one strike. It's Merrill Petit. It'll take long to get loose on that like tonight for Petit. Two and two. And just about the time you're thinking. You can stick a fork in Lynchcom. He comes up with a pitch like that. He does. You're right. And a full count. I mean, it's a two-one breaking ball, curveball, and you just can't throw a better one than that. And if you throw it two. 2 1, will you throw it 3 2? He knows he could strike out Granderson with that curveball. He's done it before tonight. And a base hit, and this game is tied. Actually, not true. Knees being held up at third. 
So the tying run is now at third. So Dave Rigetti going to take the slow walk from the Giants dugout out to Linscom. Which will ensure that Yusmero Petit will have enough time to finish off his warm up pitches. So a double by Nice. Granderson with a base hit away from the ship. Duffy last minute conversation with Lincecum. The hitter is Juan Lagares, who struck out twice. It's Nice at third, it's Granderson at first. Granderson's got four steals on the year. And the fastball is up and in. And one ball and no strikes. Yeah, that, that, that two seat fastball just took off. Running hard into Ligaris. It, it, it's not an easy thing to catch Linscom under normal conditions, but here with a runner at third base, it's especially difficult. Swing. One ball and one strike. Lucas Duda on deck. Well, the one thing Linscom. Can do. It's in his DNA. Is he can pitch for the strikeout? Well, that's when he's most comfortable. That foul. So now he's a strike away from doing so. Stop throwing. He's, he's good to go. Popped up shallow right field. Maxwell and Crawford or make that panic or they're going to come together. And the big guy is going to make the catch. If you're Justin Maxwell, you're calling panic off, but sometimes you got to yell and scream. Because it's hard to hear with a good crowd. Yeah, it also pays to be 6-5 with a long reach. So no collision, fortunately. They do get the out, and it's a non-productive out. And now a double play, good double play, get him out of the inning. But dude is not a guy that hits a lot of balls on the ground. He's a, he's a lift guy. Down low to Lucas Duda. He walked in the fourth. Side 2 and 0 oh with Kadire on deck. Petit. And a strike. Two balls and one strike. Well, the guy takes a 2 0 -oh fastball at the belt. He and I look at fastball. And with Litzkamp, I mean, there, there's no guarantee he's ever going to throw a fastball. He'll throw all of his specialty pitches anytime. Oh, close pitch, three, three and one now to Lucas Duda. Hat is completely saturated. Perspiration.
three and two. When in doubt, just throwing up up top. Well, I mean, that was a fork ball. Just kind of floated up above the hands. Turned out to be a great pitch at a great location. I don't know if you put that down in the scout report though. No, probably not a good idea. Three and two. Granderson goes. High fly ball to right is in the park. Maxwell's going to catch. Nice is tagging. And Maxwell's throw is going to be cut off by Buster Posey. And this game is tied. Well, it turns out to be a nice at bat from the RBI guy, Lucas Duda. That's his 27th RBI of the year. A hundred pitches for Linsky. The last two innings have just been excruciating to his pitch count. And Bruce Bochy wants him to check third to see if he's left too soon. Joe West is watching. Well, you come set, then you step off. Okay, everything's good, says Joe. Now Joe's never going to get sweaty with the hand movements that he has to show safe and out. Hey, you, you don't last as long as Joe West by using up a lot of extra energy. Here's Kadire. See if Granderson takes off. Not this time, and that's in the dirt. No swing on the appeal. Last two innings for Litzka, 56 pitches. Yeah, he only allowed one base runner through three. Trouble in the fourth, trouble here in the fifth. Now Granderson goes and it's driven into right center field. Maxwell's not going to get it. Granderson's going to score. The Dyer with only John Lincecum gives the Mets the lead. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change in auto service, your oil change tune up and smog expert. We'll be back. Net Bay Area is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffINS.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Well, for the first time in the series, the Mets have taken a lead against the Giants. It's 3 2. The pitcher now for the Giants will be Usmero Petit. Let's take a look at the numbers that he has amassed here this first half. 
16 games he's been in. He's had one start. 101 with a 390 ERA for Petit. 38 base runners and 32 and a third. You're going to see a fastball that's high 80s. Very deceptive, a little short arm, quick release that gets on you quick, and he will shave the corners with two types of movement: fastball, a two seamer, and a four seamer. He's got a very good little slider with downward tilts. His best kill pitch. He'll throw a changeup and an occasional curveball just to let the scouts know he has one. So here's Wilmer Flores with Kadire at second base, two outs. Who runs in here for the Mets? And Petit right in the strike zone, and it's no balls in one strike. Both teams with four hits. Side corner, another and two. And that's what Petit does. And he just comes in and starts shaving strike zone. Just not an easy guy to pick up. Oh, two pitch. Here it is. Breaking ball. Hop to left field. It'll be Aoki. Calling off Crawford. That's going to end the inning. Two runs on three hits. Giants are coming up. It'll be Pagan, Posey, and Maxwell. It was a Buster Posey two run double. It was a Brandon Belt two run home run. It was a Justin Maxwell solo home run, and they all came off of Matt Harvey. And that was the difference in the game. Three home runs off of Harvey last night. First time that has happened to him. The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. And then the night before, it was off of. It was off of Thor. Thor. The nickname they've given Noah Syndergaard. Four in the dark night combined about what 40 starts in the big leagues? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how you will get a little aura around your name if you have a couple good strikeout games. Well, in this town. In this town. Well, hey, look, Syndergaard and Harvey, they're, they're pretty special talents yeah, now, they're but they're young. I mean, they're, they're learning. Hey, for the longest time, we had two animals. We had the panda and the giraffe. Come on. Yep. 
So that was Thor right there. That was Thor. That was Noah Syndergaard, the 21 year old. So it was 98 consistently. Hit on the ground to short. A nice hop for Flores. Off balance. Throw and Duda tags him out. That's 11 straight. Retired by Jonathan Neese. All right, time now for our Geico quote. This one comes from Tim Hudson talking about the Giants' offense. He said, "I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad I'm pitching for this team and not against it." And that has been a pretty accurate statement about what this Giants team has done on the road. Averaged five plus runs a game. And they have the best road record in the National League. Buster Posey takes one in the dirt. He's one for two. Buster at first base tonight. A little low, two and oh. Nice with eighty two pitches. Mitch in the 11 in a row that Nice has retired. They need to get him in the stretch. Or you know, and maybe it'll happen. Yeah. Just might do it to himself. You're right. Although Buster could lean on one here. It's three balls and no strikes. Taps it to Nice. I think Nice had an idea that Posey had the green light. Well, you know what you call that right there? That's a gift. If you're Jonathan Nice, you're thinking, Whoa. wow. That Thank you. Awesome. Maxwell has hit into a double play and he's struck out. And he takes a little low, one and oh. Get so used to seeing that pitch called a strike by their umpires when you don't get it, it almost like locks you up. And that's pulled past Roberto Kelly. And it played it per perfectly. A lot of commandos here. Not many guys bring gloves. Not many gals bring gloves. Off the end of the bat, Campbell charging, Campbell juggling, and Maxwell's aboard. Be shocked if they gave Campbell or gave Maxwell a hit on that. Yeah, I think they're going to rule it in there, and I agree. I mean, he just got sloppy on the exchange. He pulls that thing out of his glove cleanly, it's an out. Crawford is 0 for 2. He's bounced out to the second baseman Herrera twice. Out of play down the left field line. No balls in a strike. That's play Crawford slightly the opposite way towards left field with about four steps. Straight away center towards the gap, and the same can be said about Granderson and right field. About four steps towards the right center field gap, they give the line. Crawford high and deep into right center field. Granderson back. It is out of here. And the Giants, with that swing, take the lead. The error by Campbell allowed Crawford to come to the plate. His ninth home run of the year. And those are RBIs number 39 and 40. Have a first half, Mr. Crawford. He got a high breaking ball right out above the belt and jumped on it. And as you pointed out, partner, that's how you take advantage of, a, of an extra out in an inning. Three weak ground balls in this inning. And one missed play, and then the big fly. Oh, middle in 
up above the belt. See you later. That's on a tee. Nice response for the Giants bench. Here, 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 here. Well done. Very happy on the inside. <laughs> you, have to, you have to suppress that enthusiasm. You, you can't get too high when you're going good, I guess. Absolutely. A ball and a strike to Duffy. Duffy on the ground sharply to Herrera. And this will end the inning. So Crawford hits his ninth of the year. And it gives the Giants the lead. And it's bye bye, baby. 4 3 San Francisco. of 2011 Willie Mays visited public school 46 in New York City and the school is next to the site of the former polo grounds and it really was a terrific day and for those who were in attendance to that they said it was a day that they weren't going to soon forget so here's Darno to face Yasmeto Petit Petit retired Wilmer Flores to end the fifth. So Crawford's home run is giving the Giants the lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth. High and foul down the left field line. Those folks where that landed, I'm sure they did not think that they were going to get a souvenir. I think the one gal in the orange shirt is a little. Ticked off. I think it shot by him and then went behind him. Fouled to our right and off the facing of the upper deck and then down below. Our nose are not the kind of guy you want to make mistakes upstairs nope. with. And two times he's got pitches above the belt. And two times he's missed them. Just outside. Now the girls up there had a chance to make a play, and she's like, "Geez, I can't believe it." Sitting here for 15 years. Got him. Hey, scratch that scout report. No. Hang sliders. 
Just don't hang fastballs. That that was your scouting. Yeah. So here's Herrera. One ball and no strikes. out of his shoes on that one he was way out front. Because of the arm action that little circle that he has I mean he's not an easy guy to time especially when you're seeing it for the first time. Hold on the ground foul. Deck is Eric Campbell. Two balls, two strikes here in the sixth. Aoki puts it away. It looks like that was a knuckleball going out to Aoki. Oh, another effective hang and slider. By the way, did you hear from our old teammate, Bob Brindley? Yes, I did. And what was his message? Well, he was watching the game, but he was not ready to go out. It's happy hour. Still happy hour. Of course, on an off day, that happy hour could be a happy three hours. Yeah. You saying that could have started at one? Okay, well. Just depends. Here's Campbell. One ball and no strikes. Campbell is 0 for 2. He struck out and lined up. Lined up the left. Heard from Tom Candiotti. He was at his mother's house having dinner. Line to Aoki again. And that'll end the inning. Seventh inning coming up. 4 3 Giants. Hang a slider. The old slider.
summer and it's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Giants led early. The Mets came back to take the lead and then Crawford with the home run to give Giants back their lead. Lincecum started. He's out. Nice still in as he's about to throw to Andrew Susak. And Susak gets a high fly ball to right. Medium deep to Granderson. And on one pitch, Susak is gone. And that's going to bring up Joaquin Arias. As you see, Hunter Strickland get loose. Arias hasn't seen a whole lot of action lately. He's hitting 179 with a home run. One of the reasons he hasn't seen a whole lot of action lately is Clayton Kershaw hasn't pitched in a while against the Giants. He's the designated Kershaw guy. Well, not many guys can make that claim that they have ownage on Kershaw. He had a three hit game against him earlier in the year. Right back to Nice. So Oki's going to hit with two outs. Oki taking his time. Two for three. For Nori Aoki tonight. All right, now he's ready. And he did take a long time, didn't he? There's a breaking ball. They broke his bat. His last at bat. And a one, two, three inning for Jonathan Neese. Pinch hitter coming up, then top of the order is four three Giants. Go Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. Giants with a 4 to 3 lead here in the bottom of the seventh. When it's time for a change, thanks Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and smog experts. Hunter Strickland, new pitcher now for Bruce Bochy, ninth time that he has come in. No record with a 174 ERA. Five base runners allowed, 10 and a third. 
13 strikeouts against Wanawaki has been very solid. Two types of fastballs with high 90 velocity. He will give movement to both the sinker and the cutter with that fastball, hard slider, and a fork ball. So it'll, it'll be Daryl Siciliani to lead things off. Siciliani hitting at 241. And he's hitting for Jonathan Neese. And a first pitch strike, and it's 0 and 1. When you get a reputation for that high velocity fastball. There's nobody coming off the bench as a pinch hitter going to look for anything but that high velocity. Not on the first pitch. So he steals strike one with a little slider, well placed in the outside corner. Siliani, one ball and one strike, top of the order on deck. Right. Oh, my goodness. Two balls and a strike. 96 mile an hour cut right in the inside corner. That's the one he was a little surprised he didn't get. Down the left field line, working its way away from Aoki. It's a fair ball. And Siciliani's got a double to open up the inning. Could have been fair by much. We lost Aoki from our vantage point. Well, not a hanger either. I mean, that's right there in the outside corner with two seat movement running away from Siciliani. An impressive swing of the bat to keep this thing fair. It's going to slice. And we thought off the crack of the bat it was going to be foul, but indeed, fair by about four feet. Just like that, the Mets get the tie and run in scoring position. Good at bat. Conversation between Susack Crawford joins in at the end and Strickland to make sure they know what the signs are with the man on second. That's all that was about. Strikeout situation here for Strickland. And a strike to Granderson. And taken out 0 1 with that first pitch slider. Strickland a long set and Granderson shoots one up the middle. Here comes Siciliani and this game is tied. So the pinch hit double. And now the hitter is Lagares. And just like that, it's all smiles in the Mets dugout. It's amazing what one pitch can make. The difference between a one, two count and a yeah. two, one count on a pitch that was could have been called a strike or a ball. Now all of a sudden, tie ball game and strictly pitching for his life for the runner first, nobody out. And the bun attempt by Lagaris, not a good one, and it's all in one.
Lopez getting loose in the Giants bullpen. And a base hit to left field. So Terry Collins, the skipper of the Mets, takes that bunt off after that first attempt from Lagar. Is not convinced that he was going to get it down a second time, so he lets him swing and boom, just like that. And Mets got something big going here. Hunter Strickland just not used to getting hit. Very quickly, a call goes down to Mark Gardner, the Giants bullpen. That's going to be it for Strickland. So Bruce Bochy's coming out. Strickland's going to depart. Lopez coming in. It's a 4 4 ball game here in the seventh. Saturday, June 13th, a special 415 start. It's a postseason heroes bobblehead giveaway. The first 40,000 will receive either an Ishikawa Panic or Affeld bobblehead, courtesy of Chevron Extra Mile. Then on Sunday, June 14th, the 105 game, first 20,000 fans will receive a World Champions reusable grocery tote, courtesy of MLB Network. If you need tickets? Go to sfgiants.com slash tickets. So four four ball game. And there's Lopez. For the 29th time coming into a ball game. Fif 15 innings total in those 20. It just tells you he's had a lot of situational at bats, which is what he's facing now. 11 strikeouts against five walks, just 11 base runners in 15 innings. So having a great first half. So here's Duda, lefty against lefty. One for four lifetime. Duda against Lopez. And it's wide, 1 and 0. Get a chance to see from that camera behind home plate the angle with which Javier Lopez will deliver it. He is not as low as he, as he used to go. But he used to give you a, a release well below his belt. But he's a low three quarter consistently. Sidearm. Nails that outside location down. Well, Cantos getting loose. In the Giants bullpen, Granderson at second, Lagaris at first. And that's foul on the right field line. It's one and two. By much. Little hang time, middle in, right up above the belt. And Buda scorched it. Look out, Kerwood Dan. I mean, <laughs> 
He's been playing dodgeball down there tonight at first base. One and two to Lucas Duda here in the seventh. On the ground, Buster Posey. He'll go to Crawford for one. To Lopez! Double play! And on the play, Granderson moves to third. And as Kadire walks up the home plate, Bruce Bochy's coming out. Nice double play. Well, they say the hard way for a reason. Backhander. A little flip and an extremely quick exchange from Crawford glove hand bare hand and almost a snap throw and there's Javier Lopez who did his job of getting over there quickly to give a target and they get the deuce. Tonto's coming in it's a 4 4 ball game. And the new pitcher will be George Contos. Take a look at the numbers for George Contos in 28 games. 1 0 with a 176 ERA. Got a 4 to 1 strikeout walk ratio. Low 90s fastball. He'll sink it. He'll cut it. Slaughter. And a changeup. And uh, we've actually seen him throw a curveball. Contos was a starting pitcher when he first got to the, to the professional baseball ranks. And he had all four pitches that you see from the starter fastball curveball slider changeup. But when he got into the bullpen he kind of lost some of those looks. Well he's found a lot of them back now. He's throwing them better. And he has been exceptional in not letting runners inherited score. He has not let one score all year. Well the lead runs at third with two outs and it's Michael Kadire who can be very good in spots like this. And he takes the first pitch very high. Looks like that ball slipped out of his hands. The Dyer's 0 for 2 lifetime against Tonto. Tontos has inherited 13 runners, and he is stranded 13 runners. Swing ain't gonna miss. One ball and one strike. Slider. See if he sees it again. Foul. As Kadir broke his bat. And that's a pitch that he didn't have last year. That's a two seam fastball that has fastball movement that runs into the right hand. Kadire's a quick bat, middle end to fastball. So he just got chewed up on one. They sit up on the hands and watch the movement go right into him. Bends both elbows. 
fractures his wood. Uh, Kadir's look, he didn't want to leave that guy a third up to somebody else. Popped up into right field for Justin Maxwell. And that's going to end the inning. So Contos and Lopez come in. They cool things down. Mets do, however, tie it up. It's four to four. Game live, you get highlights, reaction, analysis. It's all coming up right after the game. It's a 4 4 ball game here in the eighth inning. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up, and smog experts. Now the first chance to take a look at Eric Goodell. Bay Area kid, raised on the peninsula from Hillsboro. Went to Bellarmine High School and he went to UCLA. Hard thrower. He's got a good fastball that goes low to high 90s, depending on the grip. He'll two and see form it. Two seam and four seam it. He's right over the top of his delivery. He's got a curveball and a split. And he's got strikeout stuff. See the numbers. And he's in a spot where the Giants are going to send up their best hitters. It'll be Panic, Pagan, and Posey. Averaging over a strikeout an inning, 23 strikeouts, he gets six walks with that stuff. And Panic takes a call strike. Panic is one for three. And he was not looking for a split first pitch. Get to second. And panics retired. And that'll bring up Angel Pagan. Pagan is 0 for 2. And looking for his first hit in the series. Probably in his mind couldn't come at a better time than right here. Dell pitching out of the stretch. 
And a breaking ball, and it's 1 and 0. Buster Posey to follow, eighth inning. And a strike, and that'll even the count. Good on speed pitch. Definitely not married to the fastball in a 1 0 count. Even with mid 90s stuff. Another one. Mm, just off the plate. Two balls in one strike. To the backstop, three and one. There was that. Straight down or curveball, high release. You're going to get some pretty acute angles from that curveball. A 4-4 ball game here in the eighth. And the walk. So the Giants get a base runner here in the eighth for Buster Posey. That was an easy take. Eric Adele, a protege of Fred Brining, who has been teaching pitching in the Bay Area for a long time, a teammate of ours with the Giants. Fred was telling us about this guy a, a while back. He thought even when he was a young kid, he had a chance to be a big league arm, and here he is. So nice going, Fred. Facing Buster Posey, who's one for three. Pagan has got four steals on the year. He's been thrown out twice. Another toss and Pagan back easily. Pagan leaning. He does not go. And Posey takes a strike on the inside corner. To Make it no balls in one strike. On deck is Justin Maxwell. One out. One on, and Posey takes one in the dirt. Nice play by Darno. And that play right there changes the whole inning. If he doesn't keep Pagan from going to second. Now, if he'd have gone, he had a pretty good pitch to go on. Break a ball, that's a scud. And his release time was 1.31 seconds. He's not that quick out of the stretch. So if you are a base hitter like Pagan is, you will get a bit of an edge here because Cadell does not unload quickly. In tight. Bobby Parnell, the right hander. And Jack Leathersitch, the left-hander. Mickey Bonus, the pitching or the pitching coach in the bullpen. Three and one to Buster Posey. And these are easy takes. I gotta believe that Goodell's pretty pumped up pitching against the Giants. I think so. Raising the Bay Area. Taught by an ex giant. It hit him. That didn't feel too good, did it? 
Mercer's limping down the line. That got him in the tricep on the left arm. And he does not have a protective piece on. That may have grazed out there and hit him in the side as well. But more elbow than side. Goodell creating a rally for free here for the Giants. This is opportunity. So he walks Pagan, he hits Posey, and here's Maxwell. Maxwell is 0 for 3. Swinging a foul into the glove of Darno. And we go back to last night. A hang a changeup from Matt Harvey. And Justin Maxwell absolutely blistered it right out of here. That was home run number five. Double play ball. And now in the inning. Bottom of the eighth coming up. It remains four to four. Bay Area and the Giants Television Network Sunday at 1, Giants pregame live at 12:30 on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. D backs in town for three. Just a really a short homestand for the Giants. Five games. Five gamer. And then out on the road for five games. So Contos will be facing. Flores, Darno, and Herrera here in the eighth. It's a 4 4 ball game. And Flores takes a call strike. Flores is 0 for 2 with a walk. Once it comes started. Petit, Strickland, Lopez, and now Cantos. Chris Bochi used Cantos, or make that uh, Petit is long man in the fifth. 
So right now in the Giants bullpen there is no long man. A little low two and one. Yeah, a little low for some umpires. And you would have to include Chris Siegel behind the plate tonight. But a lot of umpires call that a strike. And the Flores bounces that one off his foot. It's two balls, two strikes. Flores has power. He doesn't make much two strike adjustment in his swing. The right. Maxwell moving over and he'll put it away. One out. And here's Darno. Darno is one for three. Knocked in a run with a little bloop to right off of Lincecum in the fourth. And Darno takes a strike. Not close. An early 0 1 count to the Mets catcher, Travis Darno. One ball and one strike. Dilson Herrera to follow. Into right center field. Maxwell can't get it. It's going to be an extra base hit. So Darno with a one out double. It's a two hit night for Darno. A really a nice job of going the opposite way. They set the outside target. They just leave it up right around the belt, and he goes right with the location to right center field gap. And once it gets past Maxwell, an easy take of second for Darno. Nice job of Pagan there to, to limit it just to a double back in that play up. So well, here's. Herrera with Darno at second base and one out. Antosa looked to second. And it's outside for a ball. One ball and no strike. Giants set their outfield in different depths. Very shallow left field with Aoki. Straight away with Pagan in right. About medium depth in right field with Justin Maxwell. The best arm in right field with Maxwell. Two and oh. So Cantos does have a base open. Popped them up. No panic. Two outs. And here's Campbell. So Campbell comes up. He's 0 for 3. He's lined out to left field twice. So 
Darno with his lead at second. And Campbell hits it into right center field. Maxwell's got a beat on it. And that's going to end the inning. No runs, a double, one left. Ninth inning coming up. It'll be Crawford to lead things off. About the game with Murph and Mack on KNBR 680, the sports leader. Here at City Field, it's a 4 4 ball game. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and smog experts. So, J. Reese Familia coming in for the 27th time. He's got 17 saves and that ties him for fifth in the National League. 32 strikeouts in 27 two thirds. This guy's got filthy dirty stuff. Mid to high 90s. Occasionally he'll scratch 100. But big time sink. Very difficult to get the ball airboarding as he's got a hard slaughter. He's got to change it, but uh, he didn't throw a whole bunch of them. And he's facing Brandon Crawford, who homered in the sixth. And Crawford takes a strike at 97 and it's 0 and 1. Ninety seven outside corner at the knees with Boomer running away. Pretty nice first pitch. And oh by the way, he will try and quick pitch it. Oh like that. One and one to Crawford. Two and one to Crawford. The guy that's got some ownage on familiar is Hunter Pence. Never mind. Well, not available tonight. But hopefully sometime in the near future. Three and one to Crawford. Guy with the nasty stuff like you're talking about. A walk is a rally. Three and one to Crawford. Crawford rolls this one slowly to second. Herrera has it. 
And that'll bring up Duffy. There you see what Familia will throw. I mean, he lives on that high velocity sink uh, a lot, 70% of the time. As I mentioned, he's got the split, but he doesn't throw it a whole lot. You're really not concerned about it. You're thinking, you're thinking, how am I going to elevate this sink? Is what you're thinking. And it, he does have a slider that he will get strikeouts with. It is a good one. Here's Duffy. Duffy's 0 for 2. And the first pitch misses with Andrew Susak to follow. Two and oh. With Crawford got ahead in the count to familiar and bounced out. Duffy now ahead in the count and it's two and oh. Well, he will look middle in and he will look down and he will try and yank one. I mean, one thing about this guy is he's got a little swashbuckler in and he will try and lift. On the ground and a one hopper to Flores. Two down. And that's exactly what he got. Hard stuff down and in, hit the ball well. And winds up being a big league hang with him. So here is Susak. Susak is 0 for 3. If you're Susek, if you can get one, just try to knock one out. Well, he could do it. The heck, two outs. Sound that Familia has given up two on the year, and he popped it up. Darno coming back, and it's going to be out of play. On deck is Brandon Belt. Deep at third is Campbell and guarding the line. Yeah, the left side of the infield is playing about as deep as you can without getting on the in, on the outfield. One and one to Andrew Susak. Fouled at the plate, one and two. Well, Susak now is going to have to battle. On the ground, pass Duda in a base hit. Is it that? Take an inside out swing and, and beat movement coming back to you the opposite way. That's that's a great at bat. Well, the other thing too is you get a few pitches out of familiar, maybe you, you only have to face them for one inning. Belt hit a home run last night to the opposite field. Yeah, hit up. That one off of Matt Harvey, who's got high velocity stuff, and he's going to see more high velocity stuff here with Familia. And I have to believe that with the movement that's going to be moving away from Bell, he might be thinking the opposite way again. So Susak at first with two outs. We're in the top of the ninth inning. And it's low, but a strike, and it's only one. 
Bill not happy about this one. All right, did he go? Yeah, that's right out there. Probably did. Area where you, you really can never can trust an umpire. Belt goes the other way, but it's in the park to Kadir, and that's going to end the inning. Bottom of the ninth coming up. It's four to four. And the new pitcher for the Giants is Sergio Romo. Let's take a look at the numbers for Sergio Romo this season. 29th time he's come in. No, 0 and 2, 4 1 9 ERA. Right handers hitting a buck 79. Lefties, however, hitting 421. They have been a bit problematic. Rumble going to face a pinch hitter. It's going to be Big John Mayberry, the right handed hitter, then the top of the lineup with Curtis Granderson, the left handed hitter. So Mayberry is going to hit. Start taking a look at how many arms are left of the Giants' bullpen. There are two Jeremy Affelter and Santiago Casilla. So this is really not a situation where you could go righty lefty righty and chew your pin up. If you're out there now, as Romo is, you have to pitch an inning. There is nobody getting loose right now in that Giants bullpen. So here's Mayberry, big, tall, right-handed hitter, and a slider for a strike, and it's all in one. Duffy guarding the line at third. And he pulls it foul. And past Duffy. It's nothing in two. Well, you think he's fired up? He is fired up. Yeah, should be. I think they give the ball up for too long. It's a big league hard ball right there. He is laying next to his pillow tonight. Mayberry lays off. It's one and two. That's the one that's tough to lay off of. That 0 2 slider was absolutely exactly where Romo wanted to throw it with the 0 2 count. Got him. One out here in the ninth. And here's Granderson. A one-two count. You're going to try and miss with movement off the plate. 
And that was in the strike zone. So Mayberry had to defend. And you could see just how big the rainbow no dot slider is of Romo. Even in the strike zone, it's not an easy assignment to hit. Here's Granderson, who's two for four. Yes, he did. Anderson started out the game with strikeout in the first and in the third, but since then he's come back. Single in the fifth, scored a run, knocked in a run in the seventh, knocked in the tying run. That's an hour and two. He's just not seeing it. I mean, he's never faced them before, according to our notes. And this, it looks like it, doesn't it? He is breaking them down. I mean, two pitches, two times he's broken them down. Guys with the overshift on. And then he hit him. And I, I really don't understand why they're trying to elevate with a fastball there. He has not seen the slider in an 0-2 count. He's broken his swing down twice because he does not identify the pitch, and they're going to call for a fastball up. This is a mistake. And a little sling inside it gets Granderson right in the ribs. And that's a mistake. A mistake with the pitch call. So the Mets get a 90 foot gift with one out here. So here's Juan Lagares with Lucas Duda on deck. And keep an eye on Granderson. And the pitch runs inside for a ball one and oh. Granderson's got four stolen bases on the season. He's been caught once. So Posey holding him tight. And Romo kind of a token toss to first. As soon as Granderson was hit, was taking his walk down first base. The Giants back their outfield up. They're not in pure doubles defense, but they're deep. And you do not want a ball to get by them in the gap at the speed of Granderson at first base. And that's going to the backstop. And down to second goes Granderson. It may have been that Romo threw away from the target, but it's probably going to be a pass ball. Indeed it is. They set up in the outside corner. And this really isn't that far away from the target. That's one Susak should have caught. And that's another free gift of 90 feet. And the Mets have a runner in score position. Uh, this, on the road, especially, this is a recipe for disaster. What do catchers do in between pitches? They squat. That's home. You think Friendly's watching TV like that. <laughs> That's how he eats dinner. Two and zero oh to Juan Lagares. And a strike. Two balls and one strike. One pitch here it is. Bouncing ball foul. It's two and two. You get good speed with Granderson at second. There's one out, so he's not going to get a two out jump. Now keep an average arm but a quick release. We saw him with his first assist as a giant last night throughout runner at home. Pagan. A little bit better arm than Ioki. And the best arm velocity wise is probably Maxwell and right. Mm -hmm. Now that Granderson's at second, now the outfield has moved in. Up the middle. 
panic down to a knee. Knocks it down, recovers, got him. Nice play. And on the play, Granderson moves to third, and here's Lucas Duda. Nice play to the backhand, knocks it down, quick recover, then throws him out. Does it ever bother you when you're a second base with an umpire in front of you? Like, yeah, absolutely. Rob Drake, the second base umpire. Kind of a distraction. So Duda's going to be walked intentionally. Well, you saw the numbers that Rubble has against lefties. They're hitting over 400 against them. So with Kadir, the right hander on deck, an easy decision for Bruce Bochy. And Kadir's one for seven. He does have a home run against Romo with four strikeouts, lifetime. So it should be a pretty good battle. David Getty's going to go out. So, home plate umpire Chris Siegel is going to let him chat for a while, and David Getty's going to take advantage of it. There's nobody in the bullpen. It's not like Rigetti's out there stalling. And they're talking about how they're going to go after him, and they do have an open base here, so it really affords Romo the chance to to corner pitch Kadire. And with Flores on deck, who has not had the experience that Kadire has had against Romo, it's a base that he'll probably use. Wilmer Flores is on deck. The thing about Kadir is that he does have a good opposite field approach. He goes to right field well, and this at bat's going to go to the outer half of the plate. So here's Romo. Facing Michael Kadir. And this game is over. So Kadir knocks in Curtis Granderson, and the Giants drop one here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Giants end up with a four and two road trip. But a couple of gifts this inning was the difference. Well, that's what's going to haunt him. Uh, a hit pass, but in a no two count after Granderson did not see two sliders to get a fastball at all, it was uh, questionable. And then to get hit by it, that's a free 90, then a pass ball. And then it's, you just, that's how you beat yourself. Can happen on the road. Too dangerous. Final score Mets five, Giants four. Stay tuned. Each year it's Giants post game live. That's all going to start right now.